Hey guys, welcome back. This Sunday's video is just going to be a bit of fun and I'm going to show you around our vegetable garden and show you a little about how we created it. Unfortunately, the first video that I came across made me quite sad. Our border collie Louis, who's in this video, died a year later and we really do miss him. So if you don't mind, I'd like to spend a few minutes remembering him and telling you a little about his life. Louis was a Christmas puppy and being a very intelligent working breed, he would have needed a lot of attention. Sadly, the family that owned him couldn't cope and at the age of nine months, he ended up in a dog rehoming centre. Nine months later, he was still there and the centre was closing down. There were only a few dogs still waiting for homes and to be honest, their futures weren't looking very good. So, our poor Louis grew up in a cage, terrified of all the other big dogs around him, and because he was so terrified, no one would go near him. And he wasn't walked, he wasn't stroked, he wasn't even talked to. I don't know quite how I ended up in the rehoming centre, I think it was a whim, and I definitely don't understand how I ended up outside his cage, but I did. He looked up at me, I saw into his beautiful eyes, and I melted. I asked if they could take him out of the cage. They did. He instantly circled me once, sat on my foot and looked up at me with a hopeful expression on his face. And I have to confess it was love at first sight. The rehoming centre pretty much gave him to me and within half an hour of first meeting he was in the back of my car and we were heading home. Having spent so much time in a cage, terrified, it took me quite some time to stick him back together and when James came along, he began to improve rapidly because they instantly bonded and for the rest of his life, they went pretty much everywhere together. James is a walker and so a lot of their time was spent up the mountains exploring, running and at times climbing up cairns and scrambling down escarpments. Louis's biggest claim to fame was that at one point, he was the highest dog in Wales because James took him up Snowdon a few times via various routes and Louis loved every minute of it. I took loads of pictures of him on his adventures and I created a folder of photos called Louis's Views, some of which you can see now. Louis lived to a good age considering his start in life and he brought a great deal of joy to both mine and James's lives. So rest in peace Louis and thank you for being our boy. Anyway, that's maybe quite sad. So let's move on and I can focus on explaining to you what we've got in our vegetable plot. First off, let me tell you the story of our house. I bought this house 15 years ago and when I moved in, it needed an awful lot of work doing to it. So I instructed a firm of builders, moved into a caravan opposite and they gutted the place and rebuilt it for me. James, my husband, was the carpenter and foreman of that job. So we spent a good three or four months together every day in the house as he helped to rebuild it. And just as they came to the end of the job, he finally asked me out. I'd already fallen in love with him, so of course the answer was yes. And I guess the rest is history. Although the house was then put back together again, there was still an awful lot of work for us to do. We needed to finish off the loft, or rather James did, and obviously every room needed to be decorated and those final little touches made to it to make it our home. And we spent the next, oh, probably five or six years finishing everything off. Once we'd got the inside of the house to a certain state, it was then time to turn our attention to the garden. The first thing James did was put in the log storage because we run an awful lot of heating in the winter off of solid fuels and we needed a place to store and process our wood. So most of the energy was spent in the woodshed and the rest of the garden kind of got forgotten about. But once James had got the woodshed up and running, it was time to turn our attention to the rest of the garden. To be honest, it had gone very wild and we'd left it in a terrible state. The area that's now the vegetable plot used to be a flower garden and there were some slight raised beds with some stone edging. And initially we thought we could just put vegetables in there and everything would be fine. But sadly we were wrong. The soil really wasn't good enough and the beds weren't accessible. And so the garden kind of really just then became a little bit of a let's go out there if we have to kind of garden. But then we got put into lockdown. We suddenly realised the importance of really getting the vegetable plot sorted out. And at that time, vegetables were getting quite scarce in the supermarket. So it was important for us to focus our attention first on this area. So we came up with a design for our beds that made them easily accessible and then James began to start building. While he was at it, he decided to put steps in and to put a small fence to stop the dogs going in there. 
and he put a couple of gates on there for us to have access, of course. He then put in a new path within the vegetable plot to ensure that we could access all of the beds all the way round. Oh, and we also moved the greenhouse. We took all its glass out. It really didn't work as a greenhouse, to be honest, and not in our climate. And we moved it slightly up the garden, and it now is the frame in which all of our berry plants sit. There are also a lot of random bricks around the garden, so James used those to build one of the raised beds, and that saved us quite a bit of money. In fact, James has saved us quite a bit of money all the way round when it comes to the garden. We then ordered some topsoil, because it was in lockdown deliveries, well, they took a little longer than normal to arrive. So while we waited, James came up with the idea of what we now call the donut, which is a little area in the vegetable pot where you can sit and have a coffee while you're working on the garden. But at the moment, to be honest, it's surrounded by birds, so we've got better places to sit right now. However, we will go back to using it. It is actually a fabulous place to sit in the winter. And I also bought the chairs and tables you can see there that are second hand. I am intending to strip them down and paint them. I just haven't got round to it yet. Well, when the topsoil arrived, James dug it in with a hell of a lot of compost and then we planted our vegetables. And that summer we had a wonderful vegetable plot and we ate out of it every day. Anyway, this year's crop's doing really well too, and I'm just going to take you on a quick tour of our vegetable plot, and I'll point out some of the vegetables that we've planted, and what we can expect to eat later this year. I can't wait. So we put the gates in to keep the pesticles out, and as long as we remember to shut them, they work very well. And you can see here that the brick bed has aged beautifully, and that corner over there is where we keep our herbs. And in the back we've got mint, chives, rosemary, and I think a tiny little dip of thyme in there, but I think it's struggling at the moment. And at the end of the year, we'll probably move it. Oh, also just a tip, if you are going to plant any sort of mint in your garden, put it in a pot and then sink that into the ground, because otherwise it'll spread like mad and you'll have it everywhere. And that little plant you can see poking out behind the chamomile, well, that's a courgette plant or zucchini that you say in America, I think. And that's going to get really big. So we're going to wait for the chamomile to flower and then we're going to pull it. And then the courgette plant will be able to spread across that bed in the front. And you can see we've planted some seedlings. We've been trying to get some lettuce going for a while, but it's actually exceptionally cold here still especially at night time, and so seeds aren't really germinating, but I think we're just about to get going on those, and we're hoping to have saddled leaves and radishes there to pour whenever we want them. Oh, and we're aiming to put some beetroot in too. Although last year's crop was so good, it's not really a priority because the freezer's is still full of them. So next we've got the potato bed, and yes, there are spuds in our garden and we're just waiting for those to flower and then we can pull those store some and I tell you what compared to shop-bought potatoes if you grow your own potatoes you definitely know the difference in taste so if you can and you have got a vegetable plot put those potatoes in even if it's just one plant it will be worth it but you do need to rotate those every year because they take an awful lot out of the soil so we put them in a different bed each year and that seems to keep the yield up well the ones that the moles don't eat, but that's another story. So next up, we've got in the front on the canes, they're Monge too, and I tell you what, they are just the best thing to eat straight off the plant. And behind the Monge too, there are a number of plants that are a little smaller at the moment, but they will grow later, we'll harvest them later, and they're green beans, and those are fabulous, fresh, and also very easy to freeze. Oh, and we've also planted some sweet peas at the back of that bed so that they can drape over the top of the fence in the summer, give us some flowers and attract the bees because obviously bees in our garden are vital. So moving on to the next bed, in the back we've got onions. They're, uh, they've been in for a little while. They've got a long way to go before we pour them though. And the plants that will last longer than most of those in this garden are the purple sprouting broccoli. You have to plant that in spring, but it actually doesn't flower until very late in autumn. And in fact, I think a couple of years ago, we're eating purple sprouted broccoli in January. And I have to say, compared to the prices in the supermarkets, it's cheap, it's pretty, and it's really tasty. 
So next up is our X greenhouse and that's become the cage to be around all of our berries. We've got strawberries, we've got black currants, we have a plentiful supply of blackberries from the side of the road that we live in. And so all that along with our apple tree and if we're ever lucky to get a plum, our plum tree, we can rustle up a fruit salad in next to no time. And finally at the back of the greenhouse frame, in the tub, we'll be planting our cucumbers. They're just being hardened off right now because the first lot died because the weather was so cold. But hopefully these ones will live and we'll be having cucumbers very soon. Oh, and if you're wondering what this monstrosity is, it's a rhubarb plant. And we have rhubarb and custard in the winter. And above it is a bay leaf tree. So we've always got bay leaves in the garden for whenever we cook. So that's the end of the tour of our vegetable garden. I hope you enjoyed it. And because I want to end on a good note, I'm going to leave you with a funny of Charlie, our terrier, and some of the games and tricks we play on him. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hit the like if you can. And if you're in the true crime community, I'll see you in chat sometime, somewhere, maybe.